Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, if you want a GNU Linux distribution, I got one for you today that is approved by the Free Software Foundation as being truly free and open source. So let's go take a look at it. And, uh, and I don't have any, uh, any information other than, um, so first of all, the information I have is very simple. It is, uh, it is based on Ubuntu 2204. So that'd be Jamie Jellyfish, that's the LTS version. Uh, it is based on Mate, and it uses the LightDM uh, manager for logging in to the system. That's all I know uh, about it. Uh, as far as what it's going to take to run it, I'm going to guess probably a lot more disks than we expected. Uh, based on my initial look at it, I just kind of went and played with it for a while. But through it, it's not too bad. But it's been a long time since I've used uh, GNOME 2.0. I know there's a lot of uh, hardcore Mate users that are still around. That's great. Uh, it is a it is a very it is a lightweight uh, desktop environment. It is not the lightest weight, but it is a lightweight one. It is a good looking uh, distribution. So we'll just do a quick install. We'll kind of run through it a little bit. I'm not gonna not gonna benchmark it with that. Let's take a look at it, and then I'll come back and give you my final thoughts. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to install Trisco, and I've launched it in a VM, and it's asking me for my language. So we'll go ahead and tell it it's English, and then we can try it without installing. We can install it. We can install it in text mode. Check for defects. Test the memory. Boot from the hard drive. So we'll go ahead and do the install. Uh, this version came out, I think, March 23rd, something like that, of this year. So we're just waiting for the... It, yeah, this is Ubiquity. Or Ubiquity-like, let's put it that way. Uh, all right, so we want English, obviously. For me, yours might be different. Keyboard layout, U.S. English. Download the updates. Yeah, that's fine. Um... Uh, and that this looks a lot like an, an Ubuntu install. So we can encrypt the new drive. We can use LVM. Mm, do I want to use LVM? Nah, I don't want to use LVM. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. If I was on a laptop, I might consider that. Yep, yeah, got that right. And uh, I don't see anything about becoming the administrator though but that's all right so all right we'll let it go this is the first time i've ever used this this particular version of linux is actually gnu linux they are actually approved uh, by the free software foundation as being free and open source so yep it, it contains no uh, non-free software or any non-free blobs in the kernel so it is a pure play, kind of like purism. So yeah, the, it, so I don't know what kind of problems you may run into with drivers on your particular hardware, uh, but you will find that, uh, yeah, it, there's no support for any non-free hardware or non-free software. Otherwise they would be removed from the list. I'll be back when this is done. Okay, it's all set, so I'm gonna restart. And this is Mate. First thing I'm going to look for is any kind of theming. There's a software update. Oh, that's much better. And I do have, whoa, 420 updates. Yeah, been a while, I guess, since this has been refreshed. Uh, there's software updater and software updates. Okay. Well, we already know there's quite a few. Strange, you had to authenticate twice. 
Let's see if we have any information we can look at here. That's about Mate. Oops. Let's see what it says. Just the version. 126. And it keeps snapping back on me. Stop it. like uh, disk space is taking 7.8 gig so out of the 32 gig I gave this it has given 18 gig over to the home and 12 gig to the root which is that's okay oh got to restart again because there's probably been a update to the kernel. I haven't got a chance to look at that yet as to what kernel it's actually running, which would give us a clue as to which version of Ubuntu this is built from. Let's take a look. It is, looks like 2204. Did they plug their own in? Jammy. Let's see what we got for a browser. The A browser. Next thing I want to do is... Let's see if I can get... Get... These are all non-free, so I bet I won't be able to get them. Oh, what? How'd they get by with that? Yeah, none of those are are in the are in the free repository. Interesting. I tell you what, I won't tell if you don't. Man, this is putting out a lot of stuff though. I might be overwriting the entire version of Linux. So one of the things I understand about Trisco is that. You can install 2204 uh, Ubuntu, and there is a script that's on their website if you want, and you can turn it into Trisco. Uh, yeah, it, it'll run and convert your Ubuntu into it. So do we have snaps? No. Okay, let's see how much memory we're taking. Looks like 532, which is really good. Check the app caches. 831 meg with the app caches. And how many packages do we actually have installed? Must be quite a few. 2,248, that's quite a few. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about. So if you wanted to actually have a true blue GNU Linux, there you go. Trisco is one of them. So I... <laughs> This trend of, uh, I, have to, I, have to, I have to make two comments. First of all, Linux has risen at to above the 3% level uh, at the, as of the end of July. Uh, the, the, that's a pretty big jump from what it was five years ago when I started the channel. It was about 1.5% to 1.6%. There's still um, some tracking statistics that show Linux a little lower, in some cases a little higher. But I think one of the most interesting statistics is that in the desktop market, Linux is now number two in the gaming market. Now, that doesn't include uh, people that are using consoles, of course. It's just, it's Windows and then it's Linux. But in all honesty, I don't know what else it would be. What do I think of Trisco? It... It is. It has a 515 kernel. Uh, so, and it, it was interesting that I found that they also have recommendations for laptops and desktops that are are have been tested to work with Triscoll, 
So if you have questions about what hard, okay, so now I'm entering into this non-free hardware driver thing. What kind of hardware am I going to be able to run with this? Because as you know, a lot of the newer drivers on name brand uh, laptops especially use not free software in order to get those to work. So what do you do? Well, there are, I think there's two manufacturers. I, I verified one uh, and uh, it, they're still around. I didn't check the other one though uh, as to whether they're not. Both uh, the one that is still around offers a 12th gen Intel so yeah, if you want to go that route, you can. Their prices are pretty reasonable, both for uh, the laptop as well as for the desktop version of the software. So if you're curious about that, you can look them up. Uh, as far as its ability to work, I mean, I I haven't spent enough time with it to really be able to tell you that. I don't don't know if it will even pass the uh, some of the testing because. Part of the benchmark that I run does bring down components that are non-free. So, yeah, in order to do various testing with it. So uh, I, I don't expect those things to install. Or if they do, that may invalidate things. So if you're, you're wanting to get a, a free software foundation certified version of Linux, uh, then this is for you. And, uh, and, and, and it might be just exactly what you're looking for. But um, for me, I don't care so much about that. I, I care more about being able to use off-the-shelf hardware and then be able to install it without having too many headaches to get it to work. Uh, all too often, we spend so much time just trying to get things to work, and that, has, that will end up in frustration. I'll be back next week with uh, some more videos, and I hope to see you then. And bye for now.